Today's topic, we want to talk a little bit about CCR market. How is the market movement? Price trends movement across different districts. Uh, meantime, Daniel, can you pass me like uh, a cushion? This one. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Nuggets on the Go, episode number five. Good to see you guys again. Thank you for watching episode number one, two, three, and four. We've gotten a couple of questions. After our airing of episode four, just last week on, is it prime time for lender properties market? And uh, we have a couple of questions coming in through our channels and we'll be replying you through email. Probably I can answer a little bit right here as well. Uh, meantime, Daniel, can you pass me like uh, a cushion? This one. I've been eating a lot of junk food with the kids. Okay, so today's topic, I want to talk a little bit about the CCR market and how is the market movement, especially when we look at some of the price trends movement across different districts in terms of new launches versus the resale market. Recently, we just did a webinar and we talked a little bit more about the general market trends as well as some deep dive on the ground observations. And I think perhaps this will be useful for you if you're hunting for a property right now, whether it's for your own stay or maybe for a little bit more long-term investment kind of uh, objective so just to answer one of our uh, so-called questions that we received regarding the last episode is that somebody was asking us about the price trend movement of inter terraces versus semi-detached across different districts just to share different districts they perform a little bit differently so for example if i were to compare district 19 versus district 15 district 19 usually in terms of the PSF comparison and overall quantum pricing, it will be a slightly, I would say a slightly lower tier compared to a D15 zoning because D15 is the RCR district, D19 technically is the OCR district. Uh, there are some price disparity uh, within these two district options. D15 will be of a slightly higher tier, D15, D19 slightly lower tier a little bit, but it's not too huge of a difference because both the, of these districts, they have its own pool of audiences, um, a lot of audiences, they have been living in D15 for years and they wouldn't want to shift out of D15. A lot of families are in D19. They love the Coven. They love Pohat area. They love Sarangun Gardens area. They wouldn't want to shift out of D19 as well. But of course, as we look at these two tiers within the districts is itself, there are micro tiers as well. So for example, D19, Sarangun Garden is the cream of the crop. Uh, so usually in terms of price trend movement, Sarangun Gardens will lead the price trend movement for the D19 zoning. If you look at D15, usually the radius, which is one kilometers from the very famous uh, primary school, which is Taonan Primary School, they usually will lead uh, the tier for some of the price trends in D15 zoning. But of course, D15 has a huge array of zoning, all the way starting from Siglap, and then you move to Marine Terrace, you move to Marine Parade, you have Telokurau, and then you go to uh, Juchiat area, and then you go to Amber, you go to Mayer. So there's a, a wide range of price trend movement and you have Siglap as well. So it isn't, um, D15 by itself is already a, the, the blue chip zoning, right? But it's a, a little bit harder to, to differentiate based on micro trends as well. I think end of the day, is it depends on where you love to stay. And if let's say I were to take out another district, which is D28. So D28 compared to D19, definitely in terms of PSF and quantum price movement, D19 will be of a higher tier compared to D28. So I think if let's say you want to look at what kind of disparity is going on between the inter terraces, corner terraces and semi-detached, you will then have to zoom down accordingly to your own district that your property is in. Look at the general price trend of the four types of landed properties that we have talked about, which is those that are meant for rebuild, those that are about 30 years old, those that are within the 15 years old mark, and then those that are brand new, brand new type. Compare that to that same four categories with the semi-detached within your same district. Look at what is the current price trend. And I think... Perhaps what we'll do is that we will come up with an email address and I'm going to flash it right here, which is insights at plb.sg. Feel free to email us your deep dive questions regarding landed properties, regarding any other topics that we will be talking about in Nuggets on the Go. I will personally email you back together with uh, my senior team and then we will have a very friendly chat, answer some of the questions that you have. Usually what I'll do is that I'll sit down with my research team twice a week 
we look at the emails and we answer them and we hope that this can help you in your journey uh, in doing research for the properties that you are looking at. So back to today's topic. Okay, this is a little bit fluffy, okay, but <laughs> it helps. Okay, yeah, I need to cut down junk food. Okay, so today we want to talk about this segment that we have also been talking about since last year. And should I still use back the word prime time? No. <laughs> okay. I would say that this particular segment for 2021, moving on to 2022, is definitely a hot favorite zone. This is the CCR segment. And uh, why do we say that it is a hot zone? Is because of all this data that I'm going to share with you and plus a lot of things that's happening on the ground. Of course, whenever we, sh we say that a certain district or a certain region is getting popular. This is, of course, in a generic median per square foot and we're looking at the median range. You do have to do a lot of deep dive to specific condominiums, to specific apartments, to look at micro disparities within the different projects that is in a particular zoning within that district. So there are still a couple of more homeworks to do before you actually go down and then decide on what kind of properties you want to buy. So let's come back to the CCR district. I'm going to share with you on my screen right here and uh, we'll just chat a little bit about uh, this district. So let me just share with you the generic price trend. Of course, uh, a lot of data right now are on public uh, portals. You can subscribe to, I mean, a lot of different portals to do your own research. This is something that we use uh, quite a fair bit. Now, if we look at uh, usually over the past 10 years, um, most of the time, if I were to, to decide on what is the average percentage differences between the amount of transaction volume for new launches vis-a-vis -vis resale. Usually, if I would average it out over the past 10 years, I would say that it's usually in the trend of about 50-50% for new launches and resale when we look at uh, non-landed residential across all districts in Singapore. So this is a very interesting trend to note because in Singapore, I think a lot of uh, so-called buyers, a lot of families, they still love the brand new projects from direct from developers, which is why new launches always, they have its own pool of audience. Resale market also has its own pool of audience. But of course, these two are interconnected because the moment you buy a new launch, after three to four years, you collect your keys and the TOPs and it's completed. And if you want to sell, it then becomes a, a resale product, right? So it's always interrelated. But when you look at the data like this, you will know that um, there are audiences for new launches and resale. And these two, uh, tuck in a very interesting kind of connection because what happens in terms of price movement for one category affects the other category. For example, if let's say this season or this 12 months, new launches are moving up steam very, very quickly, what might happen uh, usually after 12 to 18 months is that there will be a little bit more stability after an uptrend of new launches and then resale will start to catch up because Always remember, end of the day, new launches or resale, they are looking at the same pool of audience, which is they're all, they are all hunting for the same pool of audience, which is you and me. We are either thinking about, hey, should I buy a new launch in 2021 or should I buy a resale in 2021? We are, we are always contemplating about this question. Then you will think, hey, should I go for a new launch? But, you know, a little bit small, the size and all the kind of stuff. PSF is higher. Should I go for resale? Bigger, but it's older. PSF is a little bit lower. So, there are always this kind of um, balancing that we, we are toggling within our mind as a buyer, as an investor. And thus, these two products, they always move in this form of disparity. Let's say, for example, right now, new launches have stabilized, but resale has caught up quite a fair bit. And if the per square foot of resale is pushing too close to the new launch per, uh, per square foot, what's going to happen next is that buyers will then find that, hey, you know, I'm paying... Uh, a PSF or resale that is a little bit too close to the new launches within the same district, same region, perhaps maybe I should consider new launch. And then this thing will start to push up a little bit more as well. So there's always a season of movement between these two different products. And we as a buyer, we need to see what kind of season are we in right now in 2021 and in 2022 and what is potentially going to happen in the next one, two, three years 12, 18, 24 months because that will vastly affect your decision. And of course, a lot of time, we always say that there are so many factors and it's not just about the timing of entry. In fact, usually we advise 
or friends and clients not to time the market because your investment horizon is actually so short. By the time you complete uh, and start working, you complete your university, your, you complete your studies, you start working at about age 25 to 27, start building up your work experience, store a little bit of down payment in your CPF and your bit of cash savings. And when you uh, want to start investing, you will gen then find that, hey, actually my investment horizon is not that long. It's, you know, it's from late 20s all the way to the age 65 range. And within this pocket of time, how many properties can I go in and out? Can I purchase and accumulate and invest? And uh, we usually do not advise our clients and friends to time the market because the moment you get into the mode of timing the market, technically shortchange yourself one very important thing which is your opportunity cost of time because time is the only thing you cannot buy back and your age factor and your time factor affects your loan tenure, affects your income ability to loan, to leverage and it affects of course your judgment call and should you really miss the cycle or should you really time the market in such a way that you waited too long and you're priced out of the market because of inflation and asset inflation and a lot of different factors uh, and things like that, which we will talk about more in our different episodes, then we think that it's not really advisable. So I think what is advisable is to really seriously study the disparity within districts, regions, micro segments, and then find that pocket of opportunity to enter into the market. Now, let's ha head back to this chart. So as you can see, Price trend over the past 10 years, we are right now overall in the entire Singapore or district or non-landed residential. So today we're talking about non-landed residential, we're not talking about landed properties. We are of course at a new range of medium per square foot across the entire Singapore. You'll notice that volume actually kicked up over the past 12 months in this entire upscale bar right here. And uh, it's also important to note that the 50-50 volume transactions for new launch and resale does not happen in all districts because this is on average in the entire Singapore. Just have a look at District 9. This is District 9. District 9 resale, you have an average of perhaps about um, 50 to 80 transactions per month over the past 12 months, every month. So every month is about 50 to 80 transactions in terms of resale volume. But when you look at new launches, in terms of new launch volume over the past 12 months, there are um, a pretty interesting fact is that the amount of new launch volume is actually not a lot, only uh, shot up quite a fair bit on uh, in April 2021. So this is Irwell Hill Residences because they clocked a total of 334 transaction in April. So there was like a huge volume green indicator mark right here. So different districts has different volume ranges for new launch and resale. Now, if we look at this is uh, District 10, resale volume is actually more uh, than new launches as well. And then if you look at uh, District 19, District 19 have um, a little bit more uh, interesting ranges because the resale volume is about usually more than 150 per month. And then um, new launches are also quite on par. All right, so it, it actually depends on how many new launches are present in the OCR belt, in the RCR belt, and in the CCR belt. Well, partly because in CCR belt, a lot of new launches happens due to on block. And uh, on blocks sometimes happens with more on, I say, micro plots or maybe smaller boutique developments. Thus, uh, based on the new launches in CCR, although there might be quite a couple of new launches, but the, the volume of every land plot is, is a little bit smaller. And you go to R OCR and RCR, there are a lot more government land sales. And uh, government land sales sometimes, based on the land plot, developers are able to build a little bit more. And thus, there's a little bit more transaction volume in the OCR and RCR market. So let's come back and have a look at CCR because that's uh, pretty interesting right now. Now, if you look at uh, the price trend, you will notice that if we were to look at the past 10 years of per square foot price movement, technically, this is the only region in the CCR region right now that has not surpassed its last peak. So in terms of RCR and in terms of OCR, now I'm going to bring out the entire map. OCR comprises of all these districts right here. RCR comprises of all these districts. CCR comprises of all these districts. But for the purpose of illustration, just have a look at District 9 for today. The per square foot has not surpassed its last peak. Uh, if I were to look at even for new launches for D9, per square foot has not surpassed its last peak. If we look at, uh, this is D10, of course there was like a shot here uh, for resale. And, uh, but on average, if we were to combine all the CCR districts, it has technically 
uh, not surpass in his last uh, pick per square foot compared to RCI and OCI. Now let's have a look at D19. This is the D19 new launch uh, price movement from 10 years ago until today. It has surpassed its last peak. D19 resale, past 10 years, surpassed its last peak as well. D15 also surpassed its last peak. D15 resale also surpassed is last pick now this is also d14 all right and d14 similarly is in the rcr zoning it has surpassed as well so why is this happening partly is because when um the cooling measures came about in two of the most important season 2013 and 2018 and uh that was the ccr zoning so technically what happens is, is that when you talk about ccr uh, previously, a lot of the audiences, they come from the foreigners' investors' market. A lot of foreign buyers, they love to buy properties in the CCR belt because of good schools, because you're buying cream of the crop district in the entire Singapore. You want to own the Orchard address, Bukit Timah address, Novena Newton address, downtown core address. And thus, this has always been a very hot favorite from foreigner uh, investors' buyers. Thus, when the ABSD struck with the ABSD for foreign buyers, Definitely, in terms of volume, there was a drop in terms of volume. There was a drop in terms of uh, the overall demand. But right now, this season is definitely different. We have gone through a couple of years that most of the buyers right now, they are coming from the local market. It is Singaporeans ourselves supporting the non-residential market right now because more than 80-90% of the buyers right now, they are coming from the local market. We are in a very different season in the sense that Right now, locally, local buyers has formed this, I would say, a self-supporting market kind of trend, or maybe I should call it like um, a behavior in the sense that we are self-supporting our own market. So it's a little bit different for the past, whereby we thought that, you know, a lot of the buying activities comes from foreign investors. But right now, we ourselves are the ones that are buying into the market. And this time around, for the past 12 months, I would say that the buying activity has been so strong in the resale market that we're seeing pretty crazy stuff that's happening on the ground. Because uh, last episode, we talked about landed market being a little bit crazy. Right now is that... Uh, apartments market that are in the larger quantum range, especially the larger three, four beders, they are hitting a very popular trend uh, mark right now because there has been, I think, in terms of preferences for lifestyle, for families using the space within the, the project itself, people are now thinking about getting one more bedroom. Think people are now thinking about going for bigger spaces. Th people are thinking about getting ground floor units with patio space, penthouses with roof terrace. They want a little bit more breathing space amidst this global pandemic. When you work from home, you study from home. I think everybody is now appreciating the fact that we want more space in a sense, which is one of the key reasons why there has been a lot of articles that apartments that has surpassed 2,000 square feet are gaining a lot of traction and volume. Properties that are four beders and above, they are gaining a lot of traction and volume. Uh, even three beders that are large in size are also gaining a lot of trajectory as well. So what does this mean for you when you hunt for a property? Back to the same um, um, sharing that we always had is that you want to hunt for the disparity that will potentially happen in the next one to three years. Why is it three years? Because you buy anything right now, you have three years of seller's stand duty to fulfill. You want to buy something that you know, hey, three years later, will my property be continuously one of the sought after products in the market in the event if I want to sell it because I might want to buy something bigger, I want to shift to another location because of school needs and stuff. Three years later, will the property that I'm buying right now or I'm potentially going to buy right now be something that buyers will want? Or will it go out of trend? And uh, it is a very important decision that you want to make because always remember it's very easy to buy. And But when you want to sell in the market, that property technically becomes your product. It must be something that the market wants to absorb. And uh, it all depends a lot on what is going to be the trend uh, later on in about three years time. So I think... Um, perhaps it would be good to take a step back and try to visualize a little bit, hey, three years later in the year 2024, how is Singapore going to be? And um, what is going to be the population count? Where will people largely be working from? Will it be largely still in the workplace, in the offices? Or will, will it 
by default be like a 50-50 kind of arrangement where people spend a lot more time at home and thus when husband and wife spend more time at home, kids spend more time at home, do families want a bigger space and things like that. So that will then uh, help you to have a little bit more insight into your buying decision or what kind of bedroom types to buy, which area to buy and things like that. Coming back to the district, sorry I deviated a little bit. CCR, last region that has not surpassed its peak, we think that it will surpass its peak in the next 12 to 18 months based on what we see on the ground right now because um, families are, of course, looking at the price disparity between the per square foot of regions on RCR and OCR. They are closing it quite a fair bit in terms of RCR per square foot um, compared to CCR. So they are, they, are, they are bridging in. And thus, there are disparity across these three regions, OCR, RCR and CCR and when one region moves too close to the other one it will then, s then nudge that, that particular region on the upper tier to move upwards and then of course when this move up the lower tier one will move up as well because consumers on the ground are always looking that, at that disparity on you know what makes sense and what don't really make sense if they are too close to one another. Uh, before we end the episode, we want to show you about back to this first chart that we show you. Now, uh, what we notice right now on the ground is that um, there's still, of course, a difference in terms of pricing between resale and new launches. But actually, whenever you look at data, always we always need to remind ourselves that the data that we send uh, on whether any research tools or portals and things like that, these are all transacted data that has been caveated. And uh, at the point of purchase, the negotiation of the option, when the buyer and seller negotiate on the pricing, agree and pending down on option, exchange the option fee and things like that, that will take a couple of weeks and maybe months for the caveat to be lodged. Because sometimes uh, buyers might be negotiating for a longer option period or even a, a, a normal option period. It does take time for them to exercise the option, to pay the stamp duty, for the law firms to lodge the caveat with URA, and by the time you see the information, these are all information that is backdated about two to three months back. So what is happening on the ground right now is extremely important because these are things that are unseen. And uh, maybe sometimes you look at transacted data, you would think that, hey, I want to buy a property at this transacted price. But always remember when the market is moving up fast, it is important to note that there are things happening, already happening on the ground that are not reflected on data yet. So it's very important when you hunt for a property, you look at transacted data as a reference, but you also look at what is the actual properties that are available in the market. And this can only be done through hard work. That means you have to call up uh, listings for sale, ask about the current price, the last offer and things like that, and then do your two sets of homework on transacted and what's available in the market. And of course, if you uh, work with some of our buyer consultants, we do all this hard work for you and our team is here for you if you would work exclusively with us we hunt for properties for you we find out what is of course the few different pricing mechanisms that's happening in the market we have our own 10 sets pricing mechanism determinant system right here in property Lim brothers and our buyer consultants are trained to do that for you if let's say you uh, intend to engage our services to discuss a little bit more but there again i'm going to flash this email here insights at prb.sg uh, you can email us we can chat more last but not least before we end Talking about that region disparity, we also noticed that right now, resale prices are moving pretty strong. There has been a lot of interest since last year. A lot of buyers, they are hunting for good resale products in the market. And uh, what we foresee is going to happen is that uh, there will be a time in the next 12 to 18 months that the resale PSF will start to edge upwards in terms of PSF and quantum. And what might happen is that the new launches will then start to clear out much faster because as audiences on the ground, buyers on the ground realize that, hey, the PSF maybe for this district and this micro region between the resale and new launch seems to be a little bit close. Maybe I should go for new launches um, and maybe I'm quite okay with a smaller size apartment and things like that. So when that happens, what's going to happen is that developers are going to start clearing out their inventory a little bit faster. Once their, their inventory goes low, they will start to bid for more land a little bit more aggressively. On block might come back again as their inventory depletes and then uh, that will then form a new tier of new launch per square foot 
price ranges uh, in the market. Bearing the fact that the economy stays stable, of course, there are a lot of different factors when it comes to property price movement. And, uh, but this disparity might happen in the 12 to, next 12 to 18 months based on our own uh, observations on the ground. So there again, of course, uh, before you make any decision, consult your own banker, consult your own advisors, your own brokers, your own agents. And uh, always remember that property investment is a long-term investment. It's a long-term purchase. The moment you take up a mortgage loan, you have to fulfill the commitment of the mortgage installments for the next 25 to 30 years. Always make a wise decision. Do enough homework before you put down that option money. Make sure you do uh, detailed checks uh, on uh, your loan qualification as well. So uh, once again, we hope that you stay safe and we're going to see you on the next episode. My name is Ben Valen, Property Limbras. Always happy to have you with us on Nuggets on the Go. Meantime, take care. Stay safe. Bye. Eating a lot of junk food. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, today's topic, we will talk a little bit about... Sorry, the mic just... Uh, well, my sound.